everybody back again with another video and I come to you guys today with first of all another apology because <laughs> uh, if you go through the history of my videos you would have seen a video that actually featured a honey badger and the very poor opinion that uh, I shared with everybody back then and uh, I've gotten a lot of flack for it, and rightfully so. But anyways, if you haven't seen that video, let me just kind of get you up to speed. In that video, I talked about how I was comparing the Honey Badger to the 5.56 version of the Sig Rattler, and how I would prefer the Sig Rattler in 5.56 versus the Honey Badger in 300. And the main reason why was just because of ammo availability if you know you were in a desperate situation where you need to uh you know make sure that you've got enough ammo not only in your in your current um you know in your current arsenal but if you needed to go find ammo on the fly it's just uh you know back then i used to think that uh you know you're gonna find a lot more of 223 or 556 uh as opposed to 300 blackout but with what happened in 2020 with the ammo shortage and with panic buying and whatnot, it, uh, it was kind of a moot point because when people panic buy, or let's just say that uh, people start to hoard ammo, uh, you know, it seems to be that the first type of ammo that got hoarded was the most common, 9mm, uh, 223, 556, um, you know, 762 by 39. With that being said, it kind of taught me a lesson that uh, after all that craziness, the only thing I could find on the shelves were things like 300 blackout and 10 millimeter and, you know, some 308 here and there um, and some really odd stuff. Some, you know, some um, some 224, uh, some four, you know, uh, 456, 6.5 stuff that's more of the niche. With all that being said, I made a really bad judgment call. I ended up getting rid of that honey badger, which was the other huge mistake that I fucking made. And let me tell you, um, when I got rid of that honey badger, so the honey badger was going for about 2,500 bucks at the time, okay? And I had put a bunch of shit on that honey badger. I had put, you know, a, uh, a nice optic on it. I had put, uh, like, I I'd bought several magazines for it. I had put backup sites, a lot of what you see over here really, but um, even more so. And I got rid of that thing for 2,400 bucks. <laughs> and what happened uh, probably six or so months later was, um, you know, we, we got hit with COVID and those goddamn honey badgers went skyrocketing to amounts that were more in the 4,500 to $5,000 range. All right. And uh, part of it was because of just the kind of panic buying situation. But another part of it was I'm sure you guys all heard about the uh, ATF and the whole brace situation that kind of got centered around this platform, the Honey Badger. And for whatever reason, they were targeted first um, and very, very severely by the ATF, so much so that uh, Honey, that uh, Q actually had to had to send out letters to all owners of current uh, Honey Badger pistols, and they had to suspend manufacturing on them. And it, it was only for a couple of months, but um, you know, for whatever, I, I didn't really get up to speed with with what had happened after that point, except that Q basically found a way to subvert the order that was issued. Uh, by the ATF um, and to, uh, I don't know if they got it wiped out, if they got it suspended or what, what the case is, but they started to uh, produce these again and they start to sell them again. And uh, the ATF kind of backed off their position on, on the brace again, okay? Long introduction, but I just wanted to kind of get everybody up to speed as far as my history with this platform and just kind of uh, what I've seen and how it's evolved over the last year or so. In comes this this honey badger, right? So this is the newest generation, and I'll cover some of the differences that I just kind of noticed right off the bat when I first picked uh, this up not too long ago. So I have shot my previous honey badger 
uh, hundreds of, of rounds, all right? I, I've gone through hundreds, hundreds of rounds through that thing. I have not shot this thing yet. However, I've got enough experience with the Honey Badger to kind of just uh, get you up to speed with the, the pros and the cons and all, all that kind of stuff. Let's start off with just kind of some of the subtle differences that I noticed on this Honey Badger versus the previous generation. One of the more subtle things, and I don't even know if the camera's gonna pick this up, but the upper and the lower have a very, very slight difference in color. Now, for those of you that don't know about the Honey Badger and how it gets this honey color, it's not a Cerakote, it's not some sort of paint, it's nothing like that. This is the raw aluminum and they have some sort of a clear coat that they claim is one of the best hard coats that you can get for you know any type of gun finish, okay? It's the natural color of the aluminum mixed in with that clear coat and it gives you this type of tint to it. So it's not exactly a color, it's just a tint that comes naturally with this with this finish. Now, you know, if that's the case, or, or appears to me if that's the case that maybe the upper and the lower are a slightly different type of aluminum, I know for sure the handguard is 6000 series aluminum, so that's why it's got its more gray finish. This is 7000 series aluminum. Now, as far as the actual uh, specific, specific uh, series of aluminum, I'm not sure if they've changed anything. It seems to be the case though, because this is a slightly darker shade than what I had on my previous generation. And this is a slightly more, I don't know, it's like a more bold, color than the uh, last one. It's not necessarily darker, it's just a little bit more there, okay, than the last generation where it was definitely a lot more subtle, a lot more of that champagne-y type of honey color to it. Um, and the lower and the the rods over here for the, uh, for the brace are of the same material because they have that same darker shade than the upper. So whatever that means to you, just know that it seems like they're using some sort of a very, very uh, subtly different material than they did in the last generation, okay? Um, the other thing I noticed is that the, the proprietary nut over here that they use to seal in the gas block, all right? So it's like this bronze looking nut that's over here. That nut used to be uh, a different type of texture completely um, and it used to be gray so it was finished exactly the same way as the barrel so it would blend in so it looks like and they needed a proprietary tool in order to be able to open this and my guess is is that they change this so that a standard wrench would work on this and you're able to actually open it um, if you need to change out your gas system or if there's something wrong with the gun and you're gonna to have to take it apart. That's a bigger deal to me because uh, the proprietary wrench that you needed, uh, if you ever were to take off the old gas block, um, is only something you can get from Q and they never had them available. So that's kind of cool. That not only does that look better, in my opinion, uh, I really like these little, uh, the, the bronze coating that they've got on a lot of these little parts, and I'll show you some more here in a second. But anyways, the fact that now you can use a standard uh, wrench and open this up, awesome. Also, on the inside, the buffer itself is also finished in that same bronze now, okay? It used to be just a black buffer. Um, it was a nice material, it was, it was aluminum, um, but it was just black, all right? It was hard black. It was a lot like the bolt actually, um, in terms of the material that they were using for that, but uh, or the bolt carrier, I should say. But now they've got that same bronze finish that they've got in the buffer here. I would take it apart to show you guys, but it's a bitch to do so on the Honey Badger. And I'll explain that as we go along here, when we get into the pros and cons, that's gonna be something that comes up for sure, so stay tuned. But anyways, everything else seems to be the same, all right, as before. As far as the finish, the way it's built, everything else seems to be exactly as it was before. Oh, one last thing too that I noticed. Very subtle, but again, um, we're talking about different metals and the different uh, the different coatings that uh, come out with some different colors. So these safeties, so it's an ambi safety that's on this, okay? It's also a different material than it used to be. It used to be 
the matching 7000 series um, aluminum as the lower. So it would have that same honey color. And these are made by uh, Radian. I think that these are, they're using either a, it might even be titanium for all I know, okay? Um, but it's definitely a different type of metal now because it's got a different shade now with that clear coat on there, okay? It actually is, it looks more like the handguard, but I don't think that this is 6000 series aluminum. I think it's, I think they probably went to titanium. If not, it's it's likely a 6000 series aluminum because that's the only guess that I could come up with just based on the color alone. Let's go ahead and talk about what I've got currently set up on here and then we'll get into the pros and cons. So this is, I live in Illinois, all right? I wish that this was a, a real suppressor. It's not, it's fake, all right? It's a Gemtech um, fake suppressor that's underneath here. It's the five and a half inch uh, version that's meant for 300 blackout. And I've got the burn proof uh, cover over here. I just like the look. I like that it gives you a little bit more length, um, although it doesn't really make this thing much longer. I think the overall profile now is, I don't know, about 30 inches or so when it's like fully, um, when the when the uh, brace over here is, is fully extended. So it's not, it's still not a very long gun, but it just kind of gives it more of a comfortable feel when you're holding it um, rather than the really short profile of the seven inch barrel on this thing when, when you don't have something on the end of this muzzle. So anyways, that is fake. However, it looks nice. If you're interested, again, Gemtech is the, um, it's just a shroud, right? There's nothing to it. Uh, and it's literally just an empty little shroud. So, um, and then burn proof for the cover over here. You wrap it up uh, to, you know, whatever type of suppressor, you, these are legit. I mean, you could put these on real suppressors. They work. Uh, they do their job very well. They've got two different layers of protection here. They've got kind of like this weird fiber um, sleeve that kind of goes over the uh, whatever type of suppressor you're putting this on first. And it is expandable. It stretches. So whether you're running a really fake, uh, I'm sorry, a really uh, a thick can or a thinner one, it'll fit both of them. And then you wrap this around and obviously you've got the, the uh, paracord over here so that you can wrap it really tight. Uh, and then you have like a little bit of, of a bungee type of thing um, over here to, to get your last wrap in and then to tie it up real nice. So I got some Magpul and bus sights. I use these on a lot of my guns uh, as backups because they are exactly that. They're backups. I don't need them to be anything special really. I don't really use my iron sights for anything except for if this thing dies it's got a quick release so you can take it off and then you can use your backups so you don't have to worry about uh you know being kicked out of the range because uh you don't have some sort of way of uh looking down the sights of your gun in order to shoot at a target which a lot of ranges will do by the way they'll kick you out if you don't have some sort of a way to uh you know to some sort of optic or some sort of iron sights on your gun they will not let you shoot it so just so you know got the strike industries link uh, AFG over here. I like these a lot. I mean, I don't like Strike Industries too much. They're not one of my favorite uh, brands. However, um, this thing is something I've used on a lot of different guns in the past. Uh, it's it's simple. It's effective. It's got a nice grip to it. It's got a nice look to it. Um, it, it works with both Keymod and MLock. I've never had them go loose on me. I've never had any problems with them. So nothing to really complain about. I like the look. I like the fact that they offer all these different colors. This is an FDE and you know, yeah, it, it really suits the gun really well. I wanted to go for that like 50 shades of whatever the fuck you want to call this finish, right? And uh, you know, you have that kind of scar feel with like all these different colors going on. So I kind of like the fact that that breaks apart the gray on the hand guard. And, you know, you get some gray, you got some black, you got some FDE, you got some whatever the hell this is called. Um, and then you got, you know, more black over here with the EOTech. This is the XPS2. It is the green reticle. This is the first time I'm getting an EOTech in green. I, I do tend to like the green reticles better. Um, I see them a lot better for whatever reason, especially in, in um, you know, in daylight conditions where you get a lot of brightness out there. Um, the green stands out a lot better than the red. Um, EOTechs are generally super bright anyways, but um, I got kind of spoiled with my Holosun 
uh, my 508 uh, in the green reticle. And ever since then, I, I've just kind of been trending towards more of the green stuff. The magazine I'm using over here is a Lancer. These are the 300 Blackout specific uh, smoked magazines over here. I'm a huge fan of, of Lancer. Everything Lancers are awesome because they have the steel mag mag uh, lips over here. You know, you get the best of both worlds. You get the polymer, you can see through, you can you know exactly where you're at in terms of your round count. Um, but then you don't have to worry about, you know, cracked or, or damaged feed lips because they're polymer or plastic. These are, you know, awesome. They always work. I've never had any issues with any type of uh, Lancer magazine that I've had for any gun, including when I had it for the MPX, because those are proprietary Lancer mags for those, uh, for my for my 5.56 five, guns, 2.23 uh, guns, 300 Blackout, 308 even. I, I've bought Lancers and I've never had a problem with them. They're awesome, awesome mags. Yes, the chamber is clear. All right, just relax, relax. I never put a bullet in the chamber. All right, so uh, with that being said, let's get into some pros and cons. Pros, this is a super lightweight uh, platform right here. All right, it's very, very comfortable to hold, very comfortable to shoot. This is something where you can easily carry this around for hours at a time, and you won't even notice that it's there, okay? You put a nice sling on this thing, something that's comfortable, um, and I, I promise you, you'll forget it. That you'll forget that it's there, especially if you don't have all this crap on there. Like this, obviously puts a lot more weight on here. But even with this stuff, okay, I, this is probably the heaviest of the accessories that I've got on here. But anyways, you put all this stuff on here, you're probably adding two pounds. But this thing is a four and a half pound gun. That is incredible, incredible. It's super lightweight, very, very nicely made. It the the machining, everything is awesome very well made gun here it's very reliable very smooth shooting so one of the perks of direct gas is that you don't have this big carrier that's moving back and forth and having to make contact with a piston that's also adding more weight up here um, so one of the benefits of that is obviously you get a very smooth shooting gun it's got a tunable gas system which is another big selling point and now this is one of the things I forgot to mention as far as the changes. So you got this little notch that they've added into the handguard so you can get easy access to that um, gas block. So again, um, two pros right there. The fact that they've actually made it easier to access that, uh, that gas block. Um, and then the fact that uh, the gas block itself is adjustable. Awesome, I'm feeling all of it, all right? The other thing that's really nice about this thing is just the overall look. Again, it's very unique in that it has all these different shades going on, different uh, color schemes. It does not look like your typical AR. However, because it is kind of a typical AR in terms of its ergonomics, you're used to all your functions, um, all your buttons, where they're placed and all that kind of stuff. I wish that you had a ambi bolt release. I wish that I could at least add a battery assist lever to this thing. However, you can't, which uh, I'm gonna explain why here in a second, but if you added some sort of a battery assist device over here that kind of uh, gives you a little lever in front of your trigger finger so that you, you do have kind of a ambi way of uh, locking your bolt back or releasing it thereafter. Uh, if you tried to, it would get in the way of this notch, okay? And we're gonna talk about this in a second when we get into the negatives. Um, the trigger on this thing is incredible. It's a Geisley trigger, two-stage trigger. It's butter smooth. It's not a super lightweight trigger. It's I, I haven't measured it yet, and uh, unless they've changed anything, because I had it on the last one as well, uh, it's a right, right around a three-pound trigger, two-stage. It's excellent, excellent, excellent. It's one of the best triggers, if not the best trigger that I've ever uh, had the pleasure of using, okay? So trigger's excellent. Uh, ergo's very good. Maybe missing a couple things here and there, like like I said, the bolt release, um, and you're missing a ambi mag release. However, that's not a big deal to me. I'm a righty, uh, but it would be nice if it was there. I like the fact that it has a collapsing brace. Okay, definitely like that. Um, the brace works well, it's comfortable. Uh, there's also something I don't like about the brace, which I'm gonna get here uh, into in a second. So overall, excellent shooting gun. It does what it's supposed to do, and it does it very, very comfortably. It does it very well. 
Now, when we get into some of the cons, first off, like I said, it is a bitch to break this thing down, okay? And the reason why it's a bitch to break it down is because of this uh, proprietary buffer slash buffer tube uh, that they've got over here. The buffer is under very high tension and it is inside of the uh, the bolt carrier right now. So it's literally, it's inserted into the butt end of that bolt carrier group. If you're trying to take this thing apart, what's gonna end up happening is, as soon, you, first of all, you can't pivot uh, based off of just keeping one of these pins in. So normally on an AR, you just take this back pin out, you'd, you'd be able to fold this thing up and then you'd be able to slide out the uh, bolt carrier and everything else you need to do in order to do your field takedown without having to remove this pin. On this, you cannot do that. You have to remove both. When you do remove both, what you're gonna notice is that the upper is going to want to push itself forward and off of the lower receiver because again of that spring tension and that buffer that's pushing this upper out of the way. Now, as soon as that does that, what happens is this guy gets caught up within this little this little gate that they've created for it and it starts to scratch it up, okay? So you have to be very careful when you're taking this thing apart um, and you cannot let that, that upper try to move itself forward. You have to hold it all in place and just lower the lower receiver off of the gun. When you do that, that buffer is gonna wanna come flying, all right? So you got to slowly ease off the tension and let that buffer uh, just kind of work its way out of the back of the uh, BCG. Putting it back together is even more of a bitch because you have to you have to take that buffer and that spring that's that's been basically it's been coiled around a rod that's inside of this buffer tube. There's a rod that sticks basically all the way uh, out to here, and you're putting that spring around that rod and you're trying to you know get that spring to come back with the buffer tube, and then you're under a lot of tension. You have to try to get the buffer to be flush with the back end of the receiver and then try to lower the upper in place and then let go of the buffer tube so that it can spring back into place and back into that BCG. I don't wanna do it on camera right now <laughs> because I'm gonna be fumbling around with it for too long. There are videos that show you exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. If you don't believe me, go watch them. It's fine, it's not a big deal. Like uh, when it comes down to cleaning it, you know, it is what it is. You're just gonna have to deal with it. It's no big deal. It's just a pain in the ass to do it. It's not enjoyable to do it. So that's one of the major cons. Um, and then because of this, this little, you know, area that they've cut out for the uh, BCG, again, you can't put some sort of, of a, uh, of a um, battery assist device because, again, there's just no room for it. Um, a lot of those battery assist devices will have to wrap around the little ping pong paddle right here. And there's just not enough room. No matter how they design it, it I just can't see a way for them to do so uh, successfully and have it stay there. And even if you're able to, to do that, when you're taking this thing apart, it's going to be that much harder to avoid scratching the crap out of this finish. So that's one of the, the cons. The other con is that it does get dirty enough on a regular basis to where you're going to want to clean it because it's just like an AR, it's um, it's direct gas, and not only is it direct gas, but it's a very short gas system over here, which means you're getting a lot of that crap back here in the chamber really quickly when you're shooting. Even if you're shooting off 100 rounds, you're gonna get a lot of dirt up in this chamber. So when you're taking this thing apart, which you're not gonna wanna do as often, you're gonna notice that oh shit, uh, I really do need to clean the crap out of this thing right now. That being said, because it's not a piston system, obviously you get a smoother shooting gun, but the trade-off is that it's gonna be dirty as hell um, and it can it can definitely give you some issues, but you've got the adjustable gas too. If you start running into some cycling issues because it's just too gritty and too gunky in there, you could always turn up the gas and you should be all right. Um, but with that being said, uh, it's not going to be enjoyable to clean this thing all the time. The other thing is that the brace right here, these rods, again, are aluminum. They're thin. They're kind of flimsy, okay? Um, they don't have a very positive locking system when they're fully when they're fully extracted like this. So you can see, you can hear it right now. 
it's just kind of loose in there. And when you're shouldering this, uh, as of right now, ATF don't don't hurt me. All right, uh, they, you know, you guys said it was all right for right now, anyways. But if you're shouldering this, it's just not a very sturdy surface to put your shoulder up against. It feels like you're going to break this thing sometimes. Okay, I'm sure you won't. This this aluminum is solid enough. It just feels that way. And and for a gun that's this expensive, um, it's just kind of a shame that you have to deal with stuff like this. It's not just that. It's also the upper and the lower very slightly, very slightly. And the, the same happened with my last generation, but it's just got a little bit of play in it. Okay, now it's not uncommon for ARs, um, especially if they are using two different materials. I can kind of see where that would happen, but you know, it, just again, for a gun this expensive, you would expect maybe a little bit better in terms of your uh, quality control. Not a big deal, not a deal breaker, just something you'll notice. I told you guys that these used to be 2,500 bucks. Um, right now, if you're willing to wait the 15 month um, period to back order one of these directly from Q, you're looking at right around three grand uh, for your purchase of a pistol. If you're buying it on the secondhand market, like at, on uh, a gun broker, arms list, or wherever else you're gonna find these, expect to pay between four and $5,000. And now with gun broker being, um, being positioned to where they have to start charging taxes, man, oh man, does that hurt in a state like Illinois. If you're buying this thing for four grand, expect another 400 bucks to come your way. Um, so that sucks. The price definitely is very, very steep on these. However, this is one of the best 300 blackout platforms you can buy. It, it definitely stands out among its peers. Um, I love my Virtus. My Virtus is still my go-to if uh, <laughs> if I needed a 30 caliber rifle, pistol, whatever, and uh, I've got this and I've got the Virtus, I would still pick the Virtus because I, I just know can I could rely on it more than I can this. That thing is freaking a damn brick, man. That, you can you can always use it to clobber, clobber somebody over the head, okay? It's an eight pound gun. It's fucking heavy. It's heavy duty. Everything about it is is, you know, built for war. I mean, when you hold it, it just feels like the damn thing is built for war, okay? Um, this one is too, okay? Uh, to a certain extent, I mean, the honey badges were obviously made for the military. Um, I just don't know. Uh, as far as like the, the lightweight feel of this thing, the fact that, you know, you get these little things moving around on you, I'm sure it can handle it. I just, if it was just a literally like a twitch reaction okay to to grab one off the gun wall i would just react and get the sig because again i feel this and it makes me nervous i'm sure you're gonna appreciate the fact that it's light like this and it's compact and all this stuff i just feel like man um if this thing falls all right off off the sling or whatever if it hits the ground is it gonna survive right um and i'm sure it would but uh, you just kind of get that feeling is what I'm trying to say. I, ho I hope you guys are understanding what I'm, where I'm coming from. It's just, it makes you nervous. I'm telling you, when you're holding it, you're like, how can it be? How can this thing withstand? How can it be durable? You know, but then you're like, okay, well, hold on a second. They're not using fucking plastic here either. This is all 7,000 series aluminum for the most part. And that's, that's some, it's really solid shit. So that's kind of where I'm at, guys. I love this platform. I think it's one of the coolest looking platforms out there. It's definitely one of the nicest to shoot. Um, you'll love it in terms of just everything that they've done to make it a very smooth shooter, including the trigger, including the gas system, and you know, just the, the short and bolt carrier and all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's a really well-made platform, um, really well thought out uh, for what its purpose is. Uh, I would just say that, you know, if you're willing to, uh, you know, if you're willing to go through all the shit in terms of uh, the ownership, if you're willing to pay the price, if you're willing to deal with like the little things, if you're not OCD like I am, and these things don't bother you, it's a great platform for you. Um, if you are looking for more of a all around better built, more solid platform that's comparable, that does everything that this thing does, but it just does so maybe at an extra three and a half, four pounds, 
you're talking about the uh, Sig Virtus in the nine inch barrel, 300 blackout. Can't go wrong with either really guys. Uh, but that's where I'm at. If you have a differing opinion, if you wanna chime in, throw in your two cents, by all means, keep those comments coming. Make sure you hit that like button, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification button so that you can stay tuned for the next stuff um, that's up and coming. Guys, until the next time, I will catch you later. Take care.